It's time to predict game week 11 of the championship. It's an unpredictable league and there are some great games. Who would predict this league? Well, I'll tell you who. Me and my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are you getting on? Are you excited for this, Mark? I'm excited. I'm hoping the goals continue. I mean, what? What was this weekend? Goals galore. It was amazing. Yeah, let's hope it let's hope it continues, however unpredictable it is. Yeah, it's it's absolutely mad. Like I wouldn't have had Cardiff pegged for that sort of result and <laughs> Bristol City doing it for Liam Manning as well. Wonderful yeah, stuff. That was great to see. I don't think Omar Rizzo would have predicted Cardiff to win five 0 No. Um, I don't think any Cardiff <laughs> fan. Feel free, Cardiff fans, in the comments to say if you would have predicted that. No, I, I can't see anyone predicting that, but fair play to them. We'll talk about them in a second, but fair play. Yeah, yeah it was ridiculous. Like, every single shot was just going in oh. everywhere. It was mad. So, the first game. Before we get to the first game, if you're watching this on our YouTube, which of course you are, because it only goes on our YouTube, remember, like the video and subscribe to our channel for even more championship content. On to Cardiff City versus Portsmouth. Where are you sitting on this one? Oh, I, I, I've gone... Well, I'll, I'll get this bit out of the way. I've gone for a 1-1 draw. Um, because I think something's got to settle down on both sides. Um, both both sides did brilliantly at the weekend. Pompey got a win as well. Um, and, I mean, just a, a word on, on Ruben Colwell, please, for Cardiff. My God. One-man machine in that game. Two assists, one goal. Um, and, and just looked absolutely class throughout that game as well. Really showed what what an amazing player he was. I don't think it's you know he's he's been able to show it in that Cardiff team because of how all over the place they've been. But he just absolutely stepped up. I mean, other other great performances in there as well. But that has to be picked out. <laughs> they were insanely good. Um, and, you know, I, I was obviously watching our, our game, the Luton game versus Watford. So I didn't see this one live. I watched the, the the replays of it because I thought, well, probably the red card had a big impact on the, on the result. The fact that Rooney was in the stands. The red card <laughs> happened after Cardiff were 2-0 up and cruising at this point, right? And what a stupid red card. I mean, Perry NG is a little git, right? He really is. <laughs> like anyone who's played, he's just a little annoying gnat. Um, he's got um, him and um, uh, what's his name from Sunderland, Luco Nine. Very, for me, kind of made of the set, cut from the same cloth. Um, and But you, you know better. You don't strangle a player on the pitch. <laughs> Seriously. I know. I know. Just, it, oh, just a, such a needless. Reds. No, it's a nailed on red, absolutely all day of the week. Yeah. Sissoko just absolutely lost it, lost the plot. Um, but yeah, I mean, they they were cruising by that point. I think I, I think they could have easily won five 0 with with playing eleven men in that game. They they were absolutely on top there, and Plymouth barely got looking. Um, so yeah, one one. I mean, having. <laughs> Having seen Portsmouth's game as well, I think you know they did well, especially coming from behind against QPR. So I think that they found that their feet too. They probably can't believe their bad luck, can they? They thought they they'd have been thinking away at Cardiff following that up, and they saw the result and went, <laughs> "How's your luck, mate?" Um, but yeah, one one, one one for me. It's gonna be tight. Yeah, so I I'm back in Cardiff. I've gone for two nil to Cardiff, although. You know, both teams coming off good results, different types of results. Like, yeah, Portsmouth for playing QPR, who just can't buy a point at the moment. It's quite crazy. But after a 5 0, and, and, you know, players looking like they're just full of confidence when they're actually sitting 22nd in the table. Mm. Like, I don't know what Omar Riz has done, but the last three, you know, two wins, one draw. Yeah. So I can't see past Cardiff here. I, j I just can't. And that's that's absolutely fair enough. I think um, they've won 5-0. I, 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 I need to see more than one game. It's got that Stoke 6-0 a bit uh, vibes about it. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's a complete one-off yet. But you're right. Riz Omar has done really well um, over the last few games, definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> We will see, but I think it might be a lot tighter than, than the last one. I think Pompey fans certainly hope so. 
yeah, I think it'll be a good game anyway. You know, 22nd versus 23rd, both teams really needing points. So I think they'll be going for it, both of them. And on to Leeds versus Watford. Watford <laughs> stinking up the place away from home at the moment. So where do you see it? Yeah, I've gone two nil, and on reflection, that's that's quite low, isn't it? <laughs> um, has anyone seen Ogbonna yet? By the way, after he decided he didn't fancy any more of the game after the ninety first minute, so we were talking yeah. about this on the post match. <laughs> the Luton Town and 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 even the BBC, uh, no, sorry, Sky Sports had reported that Ogbonna had been sent off. We watched it back. He just wandered off the pitch. He just had enough. Mm. So <laughs> I wonder if he'll turn up again or whether he's uh, he's been injured. No, he's but, injured. Uh, He's injured. He's, injured. Yeah, he he's out. Like he'd for, had enough. He's out for weeks. Apparently, is he's, he? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jacob Brown <laughs> turns it inside it out. <laughs> it will. It will. But you know, you saw like how Jacob Brown absolutely flipped him inside out and then put the ball through his legs to score that goal. Yeah, he's. You know, he's uh, unable to play. And you know, he's thirty-five. You can't keep flogging a thirty-five-year-old player, like especially in like double game weeks when it's. You know, mm. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. It's it's crazy at that age. So I've gone Leeds for Watford nil because after seeing the Watford defenders in the flesh, like Porteous and Pollock, wow, they are absolutely horrendous defenders. Maybe it was the occasion because I know Porteous never turns up at Kenilworth Road. He's always a bit scared. Um uh, he just didn't look up for it, but right. uh, and you know what, Ellen Road is far more intimidating <laughs> than Kenilworth well, it's, it's, Road. It's very different, but it's certainly not. Uh, it's, it's certainly not quiet, is it? Um, yeah, I, what is going on with their sort of Jekyll and Hyde home and away performances? I mean, I know teams do this, but this is like they're, they're like a different team. You know, they they came from behind to beat Middlesbrough 2-1 in the previous game and played really well in the process. And they've lost, I think, their last three games away from home by three goals. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's mad, isn't it, how different it, they are away from home? Yeah, so I'm not backing them away from home. I'm going, no. <laughs> gone big. I've gone big. Like, it's funny that we both back Leeds to win, but, you know, <laughs> anything can happen it, in the championship. You it, never know. <laughs> It doesn't take much for us to back against Watford, but I think it's perfectly good justification on this occasion. I really do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on to the next one, Oxford versus Derby County. Oxford at home. They're very good at home. I think they're yeah. unbeaten at home. I think they've only won at home. I don't think they've... No, they drew Burnley. They drew Burnley nil-nil at home, didn't they? Yeah. They're, they're very good at home. So for that reason, I've gone 2-1 Oxford's. I think we're thinking the same thing here. I've gone one nil. Um, Derby are also very good at home. They're quite similar sides, really. They're both brilliant at home and just not quite as good away from home, um, generally. So, yeah, I I've gone one nil. I think it'll be a, a tight affair um, for that. I think, um, yeah, I think Oxford, Oxford will just sneak it. They've just come off a, a decent result as well, haven't they? So, um, yeah, I I've gone one nil for the same sort of reasons as you. And on to Preston North End versus Norwich. Yeah. Now, I mean, it, it would it would take someone brave, wouldn't it, to to back Preston in this one? Um, <laughs> although, you know, they, they did they did really well. They beat Coventry at home, and you know, Co although Coventry are not in form, you know, and and by all accounts, Preston, uh, I think Coventry have a terrible record. Uh, deep down. I know ours isn't the best, but I think Coventry's is even worse. Um, so I've I've gone three one Norwich um, for this one. Norwich surprising draw. Um, you have to say with Stoke. I think they just edged the game, but there wasn't that much in it. Probably deserved to be a draw. Really, um, was that the game where both the goals came within like two minutes in the first half, and then nothing else happened? Like everyone yes, could have just nothing everyone happened. Could have just gone home half. after after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just call it a forty-five minute game. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think Norwich are still full of goals. Um, they scored too many, and, and Preston. Yeah, they're not they're not going to get relegated, but they're not going to be fighting at the top. Um, they're, they're a relatively solid side as they have been for countless seasons. I, I, I think Norwich are going to win this relatively comfortably, three-one. Yeah, I've also gone Norwich three, Preston one. Uh, I do think Preston have had that that little 
resurgence. And as shown against Burnley, they can defend because, you know, they got a nil-nil out of that. Um, but I, I just don't think Norwich will lose this or draw. I, I can't, I can't see it because I think that Stoke draw was a little bit of a knockback. I think at the same time, Norwich were quite wasteful. There were some chances that they just missed. But I, I fully expect them to get back on that wagon and start, start putting teams to the sword again, you know, with their, their fours, their threes. Um, it's crazy how many goals they've scored this season. 17 mm. already, joint most with Leeds. It's mad. Which is and, mad when you consider yeah. how poor their start was as well. So most so of those bad. goals were just in like five games, right? Yeah. Well, they scored 14 <laughs> goals in yeah. four games. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely Insane. crazy. So I'm, I'm thinking they'll, they'll, you know, there'll be quite a few goals in that game for Norwich, not so much for Preston. Uh, on, yeah. Onto a game where I haven't predicted many goals. Sheffield Wednesday versus Swansea. I've gone for a nil-nil here because I mean, Sheffield uh, Swansea they, they defend really well, but they also don't score that much, even though they they have the attacking talent. That's what's mm. mad. Uh, and they're just not scoring. It hasn't clicked. But that you know, they got a goal difference, a plus one. They're not. They're not conceding many. But I can't yeah. see Sheffield Wednesday breaking them down. I can't see Swansea scoring. So yeah, nil nil. Well, I, I'm similar. I've gone for a tight one nil. I'm still back in Swansea just over Sheffield Wednesday. I think they've got more quality in their team, and and can. Um, and, and can hurt them, but you're right. They don't score many goals, and and they both are coming off um, losses. I think you know, one nil loss for for Swansea in the last game, and Sheffield Wednesday lost to Burnley, which you know happens um, against a good side like Burnley, and they'll be at home. But again, I think I think Swansea are very good defensively. Um, I think it'll be hard for Sheffield Wednesday to break them down. I think they've probably just got enough. But you're right, it's going to be very tight. Not many goals. Yeah, same, similar for me. One nil Swansea. Mm. Yeah, no fair play. It, it look, it could go either way. Like Sheffield Wednesday could nick it. You never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, it, it could literally go yeah. either way. It'll be five four now. Now we've said that. Won't <laughs> it? You know what this league's like. It'll be five four. Um, yeah. yeah, be surprised though. Right on to Stoke versus Bristol City. Uh, you know where do you stand on this one? Well, I think, well, Bristol City, what result? Let's say that to start with, you know, um, I think against against Borough, um, did really well in that game, scored two goals, a good time as well. And obviously with all the situation going on with Liam Manning, you know, that is, is fantastic that, to see them win. Um, and some of the post-match interviews with their coaching staff was really, really heart-wrenching, really emotional as well. Um, and just... Uh, it shows how how little importance football really has in the wider scheme of things. Stoke as well, mm -hmm. obviously, a fantastic result for them to get a draw with Norwich, and they have they have really picked it up since the moment what we both said they were circling the drain and are, uh, are almost guaranteed to go down. <laughs> Predictably, now they've started to pick up in in typical championship mm -hmm. fashion, which you know is is all good fun. There's there's no one there's no one absolutely um, rock bottom. Um, that you say is, is almost a guarantee to go down. I've got Bristol City nicking it 2-1. I think they'll carry on their form. I, I, I think, and, and don't take this the wrong way, Stoke, I hope they do. I think mainly for the you know, the side and their togetherness and everything else that's happened off the pitch, I think it's really important. Um, you know, football's football, but it would be good to see them get one. But I think it'll be a tight game, yeah. 2-1 Bristol City. Yeah, I echo that. All your sentiments and also your scoreline. I've also gone 2-1 Bristol City. It is funny how Stoke have picked up, though. Uh, I, I think mm. they should be safe this, se this season. Um, Pella That'll be the kiss like, of death. Uh, oh, OK. <laughs> Straight back down now. Whoop. <laughs> whoopsie. Whoopsie. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I got to say, Pella looks like a, a very astute appointment, actually, because Stoke were very easy to beat. And now, you know, they actually compete in games. that They're actually going for it. A fair play to them. Yeah, much more solid, um, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. While while we're having the opposite effect on teams, there's absolutely no way that Luton are going to get promoted this season. Right, there we go. I've done it. <laughs> Hopefully that works. <laughs> well, on to a, a team that are in complete disarray. Well, actually, two teams that are in disarray at the moment. QPR versus Coventry Sissy. 
Yeah, I'm looking at my pick here, and I'm wondering what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I mean, Cov, uh, Coventry is 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 bewildering, and and it, it, they're now. I mean, I, I'm sure most people would have seen. I know we've spoken about this. The scenes after the the Preston game were were not great, as the same was with Rob Edwards at the end of the Sheffield United game. It's not necessarily the kiss of death by any means for Mark Robbins, but I've not seen that before. You know, Mark Robbins is a very much loved character at, at Cov and in football generally in the job that he's done there. Um, QPR, so much promise at the start of the season, so much, you know, apparent talent in their side. We were talking about uh, players like Frey and, and Dembele and, and just just collapse quite a lot. I mean, you know, they took the lead, didn't they, against Pompey uh, and, and then just it really did give it away. And it's really hard to call. I, I've gone 3-2 QPR and I couldn't really tell you why. I, I, oh. I think it's a, a difficult one, but I think there will be goals. I think both teams are going to go out to, to kind of, of change the narrative. They've got to. This is almost becoming, not must win, that's a bit of a push, but, but they've got to start turning their seasons around, the pair of them. Um, so that's probably my justification for it. It's a lot of goals. Um, but yeah, 3-2 QPR, we'll see. Yeah, well, it's an interesting one. I've got 1-0 QPR. And I saw someone on Twitter posted the reality of QPR in the sense that in the past 10 years, how many good seasons have they actually had? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or 10-15 seasons? Like, yes, they, they went through the playoffs, got promoted, then they had a rubbish season in the Premier League. Other than that, they've been battling, uh, not bankruptcy, but massive financial mismanagement. And they, they've been a middling team. And remember, this was a team that had Eberechi Eze in it and yeah. Ilias Chair, two very good players. And they, they never really set the world alight. They just, they didn't. Um, and now that they, they do have talent, they do, as you, as you said, I don't know what's happening with them. Um, see, Fuentes is a very good manager. I had them really high up in my original preseason picks. And they're just being so rubbish defensively in absolute shambles against Pompey. That they couldn't clear their lines. They were letting players run through them. It's mad. But, you know, what's the opposite of when an unstoppable force hits an immovable <laughs> object? <laughs> Yeah. Like that, that's that's like this yeah. game right that's now. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's yeah, like if and... you could predict them both to lose, you probably would. Yeah, like I I keep predicting Kov to turn their season around, be like starting now. This is where they turn it around, but they just they just aren't. And now Robbins is in the point where he's like frantically changing the team selection and the formation to try and make something happen, and it's just it's just not clicking. I don't understand it. Um, defensively, they are a shambles, but I, I think mm. it's just going to be one goal in this game. 1-0 QPR. Yeah, that's probably the more sensible pick. I think a lot of people were waiting for Ben Sheaf to be back, and that was kind of right. He's back. Well, yeah, he'll be back. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Well, he did come back, and they won 3-0, and we're like, well, there we go. There's Kov. And, you know, they haven't, they haven't got a point, or maybe they have got a point, but they've certainly not won a game since then, and it's just, you know, yeah, really, really poor. Really poor. Who they have not won happen. a game since then. No. Two losses. It's yeah. worrying. It's very yeah. worrying. But I don't. It I don't is. think they're going to get relegated. Um, I, I think Surely they might. Quality. No, no, they, they, they can't. Yeah, I hate the cliche. Too good to go down. But I think they are simply mm -hmm. too good to go down. But right now, like, no one's cut adrift or anything like that. No. Uh, it's a very tight division, um, all the way up. All the way up to the top. Right, on to Blackburn Rovers versus West Brom. Blackburn have been good, haven't they? I mean, yeah, really, really good. Win their last game as well against tough Swansea side. Um, Dolan looks one hell of a player. Um, back to his best, back to his consistent best. I think a lot of their players that, that have just lost it in the last season, you know, they're battling relegation because... They they had the talent and really it was only Smodix who who were who was smashing in the goals for them that kept them out of trouble on the last game of the season no less and the same players Ryan Hedges as well Dolan you know a, a, a stepping up and and playing to 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 the the, the capability that, that we know they've got having said that you know <laughs> you know my feelings on West Brom I think that he's 
it's a game that that I think that can be managed and I think that West Brom will just about manage it. So even though I think Blackburn, it will be tight. I think it'll be one, one until very close towards the end. And I think West Brom will nick it. So I've gone two one West Brom purely based on, on Carlos Corbran and, and how he can operate in games like this. Um, and, and, and only on that, but fair play Blackburn. They've done, they've done really, really well. They have, is there some sort of Derby? They're both Northern, aren't they? No, surely not. Well, West Brom are West Mids, aren't they? West, West Brom are oh, okay. Birmingham. Um, oh, yeah, and Blackburn uh, well, are, are Lancashire. Yeah. yeah, well, they're just North. West, West Brom Starby is, is Wolves. Um, that's mm-hmm. the, They're the teams that hate each other. Um, Blackburn would be Preston. Um, or, or and think. Burnley. And Burnley, and of course Burnley. Sorry, yeah, Burnley. Yeah, their Burnley. Main one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, take back Burnley's their main one. Yeah, but my yeah. Geog- we, we already have established jo- my geography is absolutely it, terrible. Every week's a geography lesson. It's great. Um, it is. <laughs> but no, come but, for the but, football, <laughs> stay for the geography lesson, <laughs> or don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, two one to West Brom for me. Okay, and I've gone two two for a Desmond's because. Uh, you know, I think West Brom that they're on a bit of a wobble right now. I don't see them. I don't see them really getting out of it just yet. They will get out of it because mm. in Carlos Corbran we trust. He, he's a magnificent mm. manager, but at the same time, Blackburn do have so much attacking threats. They do, and as we saw with West Brom against Oxford, one long throw. Yeah, really late on in the game, and they all switched off. So I think that's capable. So I'll, I'll take your West Brom nicking it, and then I'm going to raise you Blackburn equalising at the death with a very late goal. Two two, a Desmond is my prediction. On to Hull City versus Burnley. I've gone one nil Burnley. I mean Burnley won two nil, uh, relatively comfortable in the last game. Hull City lost against a a moment um, against Sunderland. However, I think Sunderland... What a moment. Team. What a moment. I think Sunderland were the better team, though. I think overall as well. Um, and, yeah, Hull haven't found a side, really, have they? I was looking at their lineup. It's a bit all over the place. And players mm. in and out. Um, it's interesting that the amount of players that that they, they bought for big money not playing Ryan Giles, you know, we, we have a, maybe a slightly vested interest in for, as Luton fans. Um, started on the bench, which I find quite interesting. And he started for quite a few games on the bench now. Um, but they don't look like they've still found that formula. They've got great players who can individually do well in a game and win them a game, but not against a team like Burnley. I think Burnley will 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 out out football them. Um, and I can't see them not winning it. I've gone for tight because I think Hull City did um, did well defensively for for a fair bit of the game against Sunderland, and they don't get turned over very often now. Um, I know we're a few games earlier in the season, and Burnley don't win by loads now either. Um, so yeah, um, Burnley one nil for me. I've gone tight too. I've gone Hull one, Burnley two. Pretty much for the same reasons as you. I do think if Hull play that high line that we saw against Sunderland, Luca Codiosho is going to have like their entire defence on toast. Mm-hmm. It's not even going to be close. Like with Isidore, you know, sort of the defender was on him for most of the way back. I think Luca Codiosho, you give him an opening like that, vroom, he's gone. gone. Yeah, my favourite player like in the wind. championship. Uh, he's so good. <laughs> He he would have most defences on toes, let's be honest. The lad's so quick. And he's got the ability to finish, which is a rare commodity to have both of those things in championship level. Yeah. Yeah. I but I think it's, yeah, as you say, I, I can't add anything to that. I do think it's going to be a very, very tight one. Um, but look, to championships and promotion pushes, they're built on tight defences. So I think Burnley are definitely one to watch out for. They really are. Unspectacular, but mm. doing what they need to. Yeah, yeah. Scott Parker. And we'll see if over. they collapse. Yeah. Very accurate. And on to Luton Town versus Sunderland. Will Luton keep their form from the Derby? Well, I've predicted that they will. I got a bit excited. I said this just in our preview. I got excited from winning 3-0 and how brilliant 
Luton were against Watford. <laughs> they absolutely demolished them and made Watford look like, you know, Sunday League, not even Sunday League. It was absolutely um, class above. And yeah, fantastic for us Luton fans. And I do think it will help kickstart the season. I really do. It is still a very tough run that Luton have got. They've got Sunderland um, on Wednesday. They've got um, admittedly an out of form Coventry on Saturday as well. Um, West Brom the following Friday. Is a, uh, Leeds coming up, Norwich coming up. There's a lot of tough games for Luton coming up. Um, Sunderland have paid, played quite a lot of the tough games already um, and done very well in, in the majority of them as well. Um, I've gone 3-2, despite the history telling us that this will be a tight game. I've gone 3-2 because I think that I can see both teams scoring against one another. I think that Luton's strengths um, will be the physicality um, and hopefully Doughty. I mean, Doughty, Alfie Doughty was absolutely incredible um, in that game. All positions, even when he was playing left centre-back, arguably um, that was the best part of his game. But his deliveries were bang on it. And with Carlton Morris and Elijah Adebayo both fit, that's going to be a problem for, for, for a relatively... As, as we've said, a relatively short Sunderland back line. Um, I think as well, though, on the flip side of that, Sunderland have the capability to play through teams very well through their midfield, and Luton have shown that that's a vulnerability of theirs as well. Um, so for that reason, I've gone 3-2. I might just be getting overexcited, though. I think you are. I, I can't I can't be backing <laughs> yeah. a Luton win right now against Sunderland, who are very in form. I've gone Luton 1, Sunderland 1. And I guess it will be a game that's won and lost in midfield. But hopefully, if Luton pick up the tactics and the formation that we we uh, that that they um, employed against Watford, the midfield will get bypassed. So hopefully, it won't be an issue. But if we do play around with it in midfield, yes, we can have our pockets picked, and then you know you got Isidore and everyone else just charging at your defence and this is a makeshift back line that is expected to line up for Luton Town so maybe I'm going a bit low with the 1-1 but I'm backing the historical facts that you know for the last six games one Luton win one Sunderland win and four 1-1 draws so <laughs> you know I, I, I'm just going based on the historical precedent set really no logic to it because the championship is impossible to predict yeah, it really is. <laughs> but that's why we're doing a championship prediction video. Um, right, on to Millwall versus Plymouth. Millwall fans are going to think I've got something against them now after that championship You do have something league. against them. You predicted <laughs> well, them to get relegated. I did, but you've got to predict three teams to get relegated. And my, my reason for it, because I've heard lots of... Lots of people talk about Duncan Watmore scoring four or five goals. Yeah, he has, but it's been nine games and, you know, I, I think let's not get too excited about top scorers just yet, unless you're Josh Madger, obviously, at the start of the season. And even that's tailed off. Now, I, I, for me, the, the problem with Millwall is that is that they, they concede more than they score quite a lot. And that is a problem when you're trying to win games of football. Um, look. I've put Plymouth 2-1, but this isn't based on Millwall, I promise. This is more based on, I think, that Plymouth will react to that game. I really do see them coming back from that 5-0. Is, is Rooney back? Do we know? Is he back or is he still banned? Because I think that might make I think a he's bit back. of a difference as well. He's back. Obviously, yeah, the I think he was Sissoko only was missing that one well. game. Yeah, yeah, so he's back. They, they have help. players, but, though. Yeah, they do have players, and and I think that it will be a case of whoever deals with the opposition style of football the best, right? Because there's no two ways about it. Um, Millwall and Plymouth play the exact opposite style of football from one another. Um, whether Plymouth can deal with the aerial threat, they've not been great from crosses, that could be a problem for them. And whether Millwall can cope with with the attacking football, um, fast flowing football through the midfield of Plymouth. And I, do, I don't see them being able to do that either. So it's really who, who you put your bets on in terms of the style of football. I think there'll be a reaction, particularly with Rooney back in the dugout. Um, and I think for that reason, it's 2-1. It's not because I have an agenda against Millwall, I promise. That's what someone who has an agenda against Millwall <laughs> well, of would course say. It is. Yeah. 
I've gone to Millwall 3, Plymouth 2, because after all, they've scored 13, conceded 12. And I think Plymouth will be hurting after this, you know, 5-0. Mm. It's quite difficult, but at the same time, going to the den is not what you want after, you know, getting turned over 5-0. So I'm backing Millwall here. And uh, I guess we'll see. I think this is the first one where we've actually had opposite opinions about what's going to happen this week how very interesting yeah i don't think it's i don't think we're going to have opposite opinions with the next one although i could be wrong oh yeah well let's talk about middlesbrough versus sheffield united yeah sheffield united to win 2-1 um middlesbrough can't keep going on with like having massive xg and not putting chances away i mean i saw they had something like 20 shots in their last game did it's you see those highlights? Silly. And like four you, you on saw target. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mad. It just, yeah. yeah. These Banjo, were great chances as backside. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is going These on? Were amazing chances. Seriously. Yeah. It's cr- but you know, I, I've been backing and backing Borough because you think it, you know that trend has has got to pay off. It's got to change, and yet it doesn't. Um, They've been slightly better at home, but even so, I think Sheffield United are a very solid team. They lost 2-0 against Leeds. People lose against Leeds. Um, I don't think they were that bad in that game um, either. I thought they were they were pretty solid in that game. They didn't just Leeds were able to with their quality to to, to create those two chances. Um, I, I see Sheffield United winning this 2-1. I also see Sheffield United winning this. Um, I've got 1-0. Sheffield United, I can't see past them and I just can't see Middlesbrough clicking and actually converting any of their chances. Like As we were saying, their match against Bristol City was laughable. The the positions they were getting in, dragging shots wide, uh, blasting them into the crowd, it it was actually embarrassing and uh, I can't see Borough making the playoffs yes it's great that they're creating these chances but at the same time you gotta you gotta take these chances and everyone looks bereft of confidence at the front and uh, you know that there are there are some good teams at the top and someone has to miss out and um, unless Barra can click and then automatically you know, string a a huge run of wins together. I just don't see it happening. And and Sheffield United, they're very tough at the back. They won't, Middlesbrough won't get the 10 chances they need to score one goal. No. So I can't see past Chris Wilder and Sheffield United. Just can't see it. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Who's your lock of the week then? Oh, I'm going to go easy. (laughs) This will be the kiss of death. But Leeds to beat Watford. I mean, you can't look past it. Leeds have been in great form and Watford absolutely um, uh, dog dirt away from home, (laughs) aren't they? So that's putting it it nicely, at least to beat Watford. Yeah. Uh, My lock of the week, I'm going for Norwich. I think they're going to bounce back and they're going to score goals. Like Woodman's going to be a busy boy busy picking the ball out of his net i guess we'll see but for everyone who's watched thank you very much for watching and remember if you're not subscribed why aren't you subscribed and like this video because it really helps the channel and subscribe for even more content as i just said but whoever you support have a great week and we'll see you for the double bubble game week we'll see you again probably thursday Who knows? We'll find a time to record. But everyone, have a great evening.